Hello everybody and welcome back once again to the Celtic FC 25 career mode. We have a very big Champions League game today against Juventus. The old lady travelled to Celtic Park in a rematch of last season's quarterfinal where we were eliminated by the Italian Giants. And remember, if we don't get to the same stage that they beat us at last season, we have to sell our two best players. So it's very, very important that we win games like this, get through to the last 16 to make it a bit more likely that we can advance further through the knockout stages. But that is not the only Champions League game that will be played today. We have another big game as well against a team that will be revealed after the Juventus game. And let's just say it's one of the closest away journeys that Celtic could have asked for at this stage of the Champions League or any stage of the Champions League. Um to be honest with you it's a it's a very very short journey all things considered but before then we do have a few highlights of games that we need to get into so without further ado let's get into those it is becoming a regular theme on this channel, or let's be honest, it already is a regular theme. Adam Ida banging in the goals here. We did play bottom of the league Kilmarnock. I used the highlights feature. Normally I sim the games against bottom of the league teams, and uh, yeah, let's just say it's not had very good results so far this season, so I thought it was best that I was in control of this one. But Ida did score his first one from the penalty spot. Seven minutes later, defence leaving him absolutely unmarked there in the box. He smashed it past the goalkeeper to get his second. And then only two minutes later, the 20th minute of the game, Adamita had a hat-trick. Keeper should be doing a lot better there. I thought for a second that he was going to get that into his grasp. But Adamita was there to put it home to make sure he was bringing home that match ball. Not many more highlights after this, but we did pick up one more goal from an unlikely source. Uh, Dorado scoring his first goal of the season and one of his very first goals for the club. I don't think I've scored too many with him, but that sealed a 4-0 victory here and our first three points of the episode as well. Turns out that's actually going to be the only highlights you're going to see before this Juventus game. I accidentally advanced too quickly after playing the highlights of the St. Mirren game. Not an awful lot happened though. The first goal came in the 82nd minute and then we got three more highlights and we got a goal in the 89th minute. Both from Kyoko Furuhashi. So yeah, another three points. Uh, but yeah, my bad. Accidentally clicked advance uh, too quick before I got to show you the highlights. But here we are now in a rematch of the Champions League quarterfinal from last season against Juventus, who currently lie in 17th in the league phase. So they are in pole position to get a playoff game, uh, but still technically could qualify for the last 16 automatically as well. We've got our full strength team. Let's get right into this and let's hope for a much better result than what we got last season. Although I have to say, I thought we did OK at times in those games. That uh, was obviously when we opted to difficulty as when we opted to difficulty for the first time, apparently when we upped it to ultimate difficulty, I should say. But here we go. It's a rainy day in Glasgow. But Celtic did get a good result in Italy in real life a couple of nights ago. A very decent draw against an Atalanta team who uh, looked pretty dangerous at times. So fair play to Celtic for that. And let's hope we can bring some of that real life form against Italian teams into this game here against Juventus. And here we go. Teleporting through the brick wall. It's become a pre-match ritual at this stage. But... I'm very excited about this. There's Dusan Vlahovic, one of my favorite players in the game, who absolutely tore us apart last season. And he leads the line for Juventus yet again. Trippier there is playing it right back also. We know our full strength team. We have our full strength team is what I meant to say. I can't bloody speak English this morning, lads. But here we go, Celtic against Juventus yet again. What will happen this time around? And a win here puts us in a very good position to qualify for the last 16, but here is Huerta. Oh, good save by Pulisson. Obviously, we have to get to the quarterfinal again this season to make sure we don't sell our two best players. But with that said, lads, I'm not against selling one of our higher rated players, no matter what happens. Um, just to see if we can invest that money back into the squad again. But it's something we'll assess at the end of the season and see where we're at. Timber over to Santos. His Sesson Young. Oh, I tell you what, that's a good ball in if he can get to Adamita, which he can, but Ida on his weaker left foot puts it past the post. Thought that was Niall Quinn there for a second. Bloody hell. You've got a doppelganger, Niall. And we very nearly took the lead. I have to say, I've really enjoyed watching Celtic play in real life this season. Listen, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say that I watch a lot of... That I have watched a lot of Celtic in recent years. 
But uh, it's what happens when you do a career mode with the team. You just start to watch them a little bit more. Oh, in real life. Good save again by Pullison. And you start to take a bit more notice of how they're doing. And I've definitely been doing that with Celtic as of late. Really enjoyed the Atalanta game. Um, also enjoyed watching the first Champions League game. Didn't really enjoy the Dortmund game, but whatever. Results like that can happen. I think Kasper Schmeichel put it best. Sometimes a team on their best day can do that coming up against a team on their worst day. Here's Timber now. Over to Maida. Back to Timber. Oh, and he loses it. Well, before we signed Timber, I did see that Juventus were actually interested in him as well. See, a lot of Dutch players have done well in Italy over the years. Timber could have been one of those players, but thankfully he decided to come to Celtic instead. But the midfield is the one place that I really don't want to have to uh, sell anybody. I'm really happy with our midfield at the moment. Well, I mean, Ryan Christie maybe, because we have Ward out on loan. He's doing really well. And he will be a long-term replacement for him. Other than that, I want to keep everybody. There's Timber again. Have a goal, lad. And not a bad effort either. 25 minutes in. We get a corner kick here, which Timber will take. Can we create anything from it? It's a good ball in, but Garcia couldn't put enough power behind it. And Bento was able to get rid of it for Juventus. You've no idea how much I want to do an Italian career mode on this channel at some stage. But the fact that they've lost the license for so many teams. Juventus were one of those teams for such a long time. Piemonte Calcio. <laughs> But, you know, losing both the Milan teams. Lazio still not being in the game as a licensed team. Uh, Napoli obviously have just returned. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> um, Atalanta are still called Bergamo Calcio. I thought they were coming back as a licensed team this year. But apparently not. Oh, what a goal. Oh, I thought he hit the side netting for a second. It's a bullet header from Bremer. That was a brilliant goal, I have to say. I need to see that again. I was not expecting them to get that much power behind that header. Pullison has really weird eyebrows. Sorry, that was a weird thing to say. But the corner kick is whipped in. I mean, he's being marked by two players. I think Brooks might have got a touch on it. Yes, he did. It's not enough for it to be an own goal. It's taken a little bit of a deflection off of him. And it's one. Oh, that is an own goal. Oh, come on. That's... It was on target. It was going in. You can't give an own goal for that. I remember Ronaldo scoring a... A similar goal like that against Blackburn back in the 07-08 season. And he got credited with the goal. That's a harsh own goal. Here's Santos. Have a go. Why not? Oh, I'll tell you what. It was dipping. It was dipping. Also, if I sound like I'm speaking a bit, uh... Quieter. If that's the right word. Uh, as you've probably noticed in recent episodes, I feel like I'm losing my voice a lot uh, at the moment. Got a bit of a sore throat, so I'm having to tone down the voice a small bit. Good save by Pullison. Five minutes, though, to go before half time. That's a good ball out to Maida. Here's Adamida now. Can he get the equaliser before half time? He very nearly did. Forced a decent save from the keeper, and we will get another corner kick. Which Timber will whip in. And it's in towards Garcia again. He wins it. But not enough power to trouble Bento between the sticks. They've got a very good team, Juventus. Balde there at left back. They've kept Vlahovic, which is rare that he stays at Juventus for this long in career mode. I always find that after season one, he jumps ship. But he stayed put this time round. And Juventus do have the lead here going into the halftime break. But it's been a bit of an even game. We've created some decent chances. But we need to start uh, taking advantage of those chances. A Phil Brooks own goal, which, let's be honest, it was a Bramer goal. Oh, that's a poor ball. Baida looking for Kuhn. Who uh, very nearly created a big chance against Atalanta in the first half the other night. I was on the edge of my seat watching it. It was really, really entertaining. It's nice to be able to follow a team in the Champions League <laughs> this season. <laughs> but here's Garcia now. Can he go on one of these surging runs? 
Oh, by the way as well, sorry if you can hear my fan in the background. It's very warm in this room at the moment. I feel like I'm apologising an awful lot. But let's not apologise for getting a bad result in this game. Let's try and get something here. A good save from the keeper. Garcia went on a good surging run. We've had more chances than Juventus. But it counts for nothing if you don't take them. And that's going to be offside. Don't feel like we need to make any changes yet though. Nobody's having a particularly bad game. <coughs> Excuse me. Timber now. Over to Johnston. What can the Canadian do? Oh, it's a good ball over to Timber. Can he oh, create a good opportunity? No, he can't. Oh, I tell you what, I didn't mean to take that chance with Johnston. I press circle to try and tackle. But he ended up getting the shot off and Ida loses it. It could be Kyogo time soon. We all know what he can be like off the bench. And he did just score two goals against St. Mirren. His Bailey. Oh, good save by Pullison. Let's try and hit them on the break now. Yuri, not Yuri and Timber, Quinton Timber. Yuri is the one who plays for Arsenal. <laughs> Here's Dorado. Well, he's already got one goal today, Dorado. Can he get another one? Dorado. Oh, yes, he can. It's two goals in one episode for Dorado. An unlikely source, but a very welcome one. Celtic one, Juventus one. Perfect time to get the equaliser. Actually, let me uh, make the changes now, because if I wait until after the replay, they won't come through. So I'm going to bring on Furuhashi. I'm going to bring on Palma as well, on the right. And I'm going to bring on Ryan Christie. We all know what he can do when he comes off the bench as well. He showed that against Feyenoord in the most recent episode. But a great time to get an equaliser from a player who's in good goal scoring form at the moment. He tends to go a little bit uh, unnoticed at times, Dorado. He's in a position where, you know, you're not exactly under the spotlight as much as your strikers or your defenders or some of your more attacking midfielders. But I tell you what, he is definitely a very important player in this team and a player I've enjoyed since we've signed him from Corinthians. I did have to research whether he was a real player or not. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes with the Brazilian League, some of the players are uh, generated, or maybe they're all generated. But regardless of that, he's still real to me, damn it! And he's gotten a very good goal for us here at a, an important time, in an important game. And Juventus now are going to make some changes. I didn't see who that was coming on. Uh, it was... I was going to say Furuhashi. Nope, that's our change. <laughs> oh, Brooks. Very nearly intercepted that, but the shot came off. It's McKenney they've brought on for Huerta. Here's Johnston now. 20 minutes to go. Ah, oh, it's intercepted. Douglas Louise now over to Leon Bailey. Playing for Aston Villa, of course, in real life, who are doing fantastic in this season's Champions League. They currently lead the league phase after three games. Fair play to them. Douglas Louise! Another save by Pullison. Who would be one of the players who we'd probably have to sell. He is, I think, 83 rated now? Yeah, 83 rated, and I feel like he'll go up even more before the season ends. I really don't want to get rid of him, Pullison. As he puts the ball out here to Phil Brooks. Come on, 13 minutes to go. Here's Maida. Over to Furuhashi. Christie going on a very good run here. Ryan Christie! Oh, he's done it again in the Champions League! Ryan Christie, who I tell you what, I said earlier, might be leaving in the summer so that Ward can come in and get his chance. But maybe he might just be saving his Celtic career. It's the second Champions League game in a row where he's come off the bench to put us in front with a late goal. It's a brilliant finish as well. Outside of the foot, into the corner of the net. Celtic 2, Juventus 1. Revenge could be sweet if it stays like this. But still, we have to hang on for another 10 minutes. But Ryan Christie... Staking his claim in this team. That gives me something to think about. It really, really does. He's probably not going to grow much more. But if he's going to produce moments like that, then who am I to say that he doesn't belong here? Let's bring on Costa for Garcia. Get some fresh legs there in the defense. What the hell is going on there? We just teleported to the, to the center circle. 
This game, man. This game. Never a dull moment, eh? Haven't said that for a while. Here's Costa. Just off the bench. Oh, I tell you what, that's not where I was trying to put the ball, but thankfully, it worked out. Here's Dorado now. Player of the episode so far, arguably. Ryan Christie, again. Oh, very nearly got his second of the game. And our third. And that would have sealed things. They're taking off Trippier. I might make another change myself. Johnston is quite tired. It told me to bring on McGregor. I'm not sure about putting him at right back, though. Let's bring on Marquis. Let's bring on a right back for another right back. Making a very similar change to what Juventus have just made here in the dying minutes of the game. This would be a massive three points. And I feel like if we can get a win here, then I'll be very confident about our top eight hopes. Christie's shot parried away. Coombe will keep it. Uh, sorry, Palma, I should say, will keep it in. And for Hashi to seal it. Oh, he nearly did. But the clock is running out for Juventus. Come on, ref, blow that whistle. Surely. Come on. We played the two minutes. It's too far into their or too deep into their own half. And it is three points here for Celtic. Revenge is sweet. We get a victory over the team that knocked us out of the Champions League last season. And we take a huge, huge step towards automatically qualifying for the last 16 of the Champions League. Ryan Christie, the hero yet again, as I said, becoming a legend with a capital L here at his second spell at the club. And maybe he's just given me something to think about in terms of his future at the club. Uh, in the midfield position because as I said Ward is supposed to be the long term replacement for him but Christie doesn't like uh, look like he's slowing down just yet so as I said gives me something to think about we do have a rake of league games to get through I do want to play another Champions League game on this episode so I am going to quick sim this one Motherwell are in fourth place so one of the better teams in the Scottish League this might be a bit of a risk but we are at home everyone's fully fit can we get a good result yes we can 4-2 Ida with a brace never mind Ida scoring all four what a performance from him he is absolutely on fire well I said that Timber might be the player of the episode but Adam Ida is definitely taking that claim at the moment but it's good to have three options for that Ida Christie and Timber you love to see it but three points here against Motherwell Adam Ida bringing home yet another match ball in this episode I have been wanting to do this for ages and I can finally do it look into my eyes what do you see Phil Brooks scoring a penalty. Phil Brooks gets the opening goal here in this game against who the hell were we playing? I'm already after bloody forgetting. We were playing St. Johnston. I should have known from the jersey. But that penalty did give us the 1-0 lead. Ida initially was on the penalty. But lads, I have had that line of commentary planned in my head for ages. He missed one in the last episode. I made sure the next time we got a spot kick, I would leave Phil Brooks take it. Even though in the first game that we got a penalty in today, I forgot. But anyways... I'm over explaining. That was 1-0, and this was 2-0. Adam Ida running the show yet again like he's Mark Morrison. That doubled our lead here, and that was basically the end of the highlights. I tell you what, for a feature that has started to include more attacking chances, they don't show an awful lot of them after the game. It's kind of annoying. But anyways, three points is not annoying, and we got another three points here against St. Johnston away from home. Well, as far as top of the table clashes go, lads, this one was a bit of a classic that unfortunately ended on a downer. For some reason, it's not showing me the first goal that uh, Hart scored. They did go 1-0 up, but Adam Ida, the player of the episode, I feel like I can officially say now, opening up our scoring in this game yet again with a brilliant finish. For some reason, it's showing it twice. Hearts, though, took that personally, and they decided to go 2-1 up on the other end. I still feel like we should be stopping that from going in. It's a good save initially by Pulisin. He's unlucky that it bounces back to the Hearts player, and he struck it in for 2-1. It was 2-2, though, going into halftime. As you can see there, I had four Hashi on the right today. Just wanted to see how he got on there. He did okay, but a brilliant equaliser there yet again from Adam Ida in off the post. And then I thought this was going to be our uh, route to winning the game. A decent ball in, a third hat-trick of the episode for Adam Ida, his 20th league goal of the season. Good ball in by Timber, I think it was. And Ada headed it in to put us in front. We had a couple of decent opportunities after that. This one here from Days and Maida was uh, one that probably should have been converted, even though, to be fair, it's agonizingly close. Um, and then 
in the what minute was it the 89th minute this happened Brooks falls over no one there to mark Vargas and that was the last minute equaliser for Hearts which stole a point off of us here at Celtic Park they are in second place at the moment as well Hearts now we do have a comfortable lead over them but this win would have been very very handy to extend that lead and to focus a bit more on the Champions League but uh, look we still have that healthy lead over them it's not the end of the world but a frustrating way to drop two points a slightly less annoying game here though against Hibs so we do have a good record against Days and Maida opening up the scoring there left footed strike in off the post and that was what gave us the advantage here in the Scottish capital moments later who else but Adam Ida to double our advantage he is absolutely fantastic at the moment Ida the one thing I'll say though is that I find that he does better in domestic games than European games. And listen, normally the European games are going to be tougher, especially coming up against opposition like Juventus and, uh, you know, Monaco and who else have we played in this season's Champions League? Feyenoord are pretty tough. But uh, I do find that he does a lot better in these domestic games than he does in the European games, which is why I have my eye on a couple of other strikers that uh, I feel like could do the job in the long run. But then a former Manchester United player, Dylan Levitt, stepped up from 12 yards. He pulled one back for Hibs, but it was a scamp consolation as we get three points here to make up for those drop points against Hearts. Back to winning ways home against Dundee FC bottom of the league at the moment or the second bottom I think they actually might have been second bottom of the league we're at home once again everybody's fully fit let's give it a quick sim and hope for the best a closer game than I was expecting but three points nonetheless Ida, Kuhn and Johnston uh, getting the three goals to give us yet another three points so we have entered January now as well in this stage of the career mode. We've had a lot of players return from loan. Tom McCormack here, an Irish uh, centre midfielder, one of those players. Uh, excuse me, Alan McCarthy there. My apologies, I'm drinking a can of Coke at the moment. I'm a little bit gassy. But Alan McCarthy has also come back. I think he said he had, yeah, showing great potential. So should be interesting to see how he gets on. So we'll try loaning him out again. Uh, obviously, we've got a few players out on loan there. Uh, where is he? Morrissey, obviously, came back as well. Or was he from... Actually, I don't think we ever loaned him out, did we? Don't think we did. But uh, he's also showing great potential. Shane Montgomery as well. Jack McGarry. See, this is weird. 67 rated, 18 years old, but not showing great potential. Doesn't have potential to be special or anything like that. Unlike Endo O'Brien, who has showing great potential as well. So some of these players I'm willing to loan out, other players I'm probably going to sell because I do find sometimes with these players, when you sell them, their overall shoots up and these lads are more for the Ireland side of the career mode than they are for the Celtic side. Now, of course, if they fit the team, then uh, I'll be very happy to include them. Just like if we show you this man here, uh, Craig Ward, who I did say is the long-term replacement for uh, Ryan Christie. So as you can see there, he's 78 rated. Ward is currently 75. Hopefully he might go up a little bit more before the end of the season. Similar type of player, left-footed as well. So we'll see what he is all about when he comes back from loan. But uh, yeah, we've got some decent players here who I'm probably going to either loan out or sell. Um, and hopefully we get some good growth from these young Irish players. Tension has now shifted over to the Scottish Cup where we take on Rangers for the third year in a row in this competition but for the first time not in the final we play them in the very first round and it was a very similar result to when we played them here in the league Days and Maida the man who was on form that day opened up the scoring here good shot by Marquis who went on a really good run from a Rangers corner the shot was parried out and Maida was there to put it home that gave us a 1-0 lead. And then Kyogo Furuhashi, the other Japanese superstar, we gave him the nod in the team today. We rotated a little bit with the big Champions League game uh, coming up after this. And he took full advantage of that opportunity, doubling our lead here right before halftime. Rangers, though, did want to make it a bit more of an interesting game this time than they did in the league. Good cut back there. And a, uh, not a bad finish either. Past our backup goalkeeper Bert making his debut in this fixture. What a game to be thrown into. But as I say, I wanted to rotate around it a little bit. Although he does look quite small in that goal. That is one thing that I will say. But hey ho, Iker Casillas wasn't exactly Andre the Giant. So yeah. Now lads, we've had a few contenders for goal of the season so far in the last few episodes. And let me just tell you, there is another contender that you're about to see. Kyogo Furuhashi literally seconds after Rangers got one back. <laughs> he goes and does that he's normally known for being a bit of a poacher in this series but he has just scored a goal that Paul Scholes would have been very proud of there a lovely long range strike 
clipped the post on the way in and that doubled our advantage yet again against Rangers 3-1 it looked like that there was going to be no way back for Rangers and there wasn't Diz and Maida went and got another one he got a hat-trick here in the league he's got a brace in the cup and we advanced through to the next round of the Scottish Cup have it lads our final game of the episode and it's away from home in the champions league against newcastle united of the premier league one of the shorter away journeys that we will ever have to go on it is only approximately two and a half hours from glasgow or maybe two hours 45 minutes according to google which is 235 kilometers give or take so a very very short journey all things considered newcastle currently lie in 14th position with 10 points so they are only three points below us and we are in eighth but if we can get a victory here at st james's park i'll be very very confident about qualifying for the uh, or qualifying in the top eight to go straight through to the last 16. not going to be an easy game definitely a lot easier said than done to get a victory over newcastle but with the form we're in at the moment i fancy us to get the job done well, there are some interesting names in this Newcastle lineup, particularly their captain, Kevin De Bruyne, who despite being three seasons into this career mode and being a little bit older now, I'm sure still has a lot of quality. I can see Tonali's there as well. I think Isaac is up front, Pope and goal. So they've got a very, very decent team, Newcastle. Here we go. So it's Pope, Robertson there. Uh, at left back as well Harvey Barnes still on the bench for them Rafinha out on the right Pope as I say between the sticks Kanate Kim and Jay Reese James what a team this is bloody hell Newcastle are flying it seems with the squad that they have I'm a little bit surprised that they're not flying in the league table in the Champions League so this promises to be a tough game I wonder how they're doing in the Premier League I probably should have checked that beforehand but it's a very short journey to Newcastle upon sign from Glasgow. Well, you know, all things considered, when you look at some of the other away journeys that we would have to take. But it is by no means an easy game. And Newcastle get a corner here to kick things off, which De Bruyne will take. Wearing number 33 and wearing the captain's armband as well for the Toon Army. And they will knock at the corner. We get the goal kick. I have to say, St. James's Park on a Champions League night. It looks incredible. My buddy Gary is a big uh, Newcastle fan. And I was saying to him recently, Newcastle probably qualified for the Champions League a season too early. I think if they'd had the season they qualified for the Champions League last season, and if they had last season happen the season they qualified for the Champions League, it might have done them a little bit better in the long run. I mean, you look at how Aston Villa are doing at the moment. They obviously had a, a decent season even before they qualified for the Champions League. And then the year they finished in the top four, they had a decent run in the Conference League. So I feel like they were kind of a bit more, you know, on uh, on target when it came to qualifying for the Champions League. It kind of uh, happened a bit more naturally for them. Take nothing away from Newcastle. Listen, they've, they've done really well. I'm sure their fans are very happy with the European journey they got to go on, despite the fact they had a tough group. But Isaac has dispossessed Garcia there. Dorado and Garcia having to track back here. And Dorado does really well. He's been brilliant in this episode. There's Brooks now. Oh, poor pass over to Tonali. Don't be putting any bets on this game, Tonali. So I shouldn't have said that. I, I shouldn't be taking the mick out of somebody for having a gambling addiction. I have to say, it's something I've never been like big into gambling i'll do an accumulator every now and again sometimes i kind of prefer doing them for the ufc i just feel like i'm a lot more engaged with all the fights on a ufc card as opposed to you know putting bets on uh league one games with teams that i don't really care about but please gamble responsibly folks this episode is not sponsored by bet365 <laughs> but god 24 minutes in already We've not been able to create anything just yet, but we're in a decent position here with Adamida. A former Premier League player up against Premier League opposition. It's a basically brand new Newcastle team. I mean, Nick Pope obviously is an OG, as is Tonali and Isaac. But everyone else is uh, a new signing. 
Gordon obviously is on the bench for them as well. So they've kept on to some of their very good players and they've improved around them as well as Isaac, one of the OGs, has given them the lead here after half an hour. It's probably what they deserve, if we're going to be honest about it. We've been unable to create anything. They've been applying a lot of pressure any time we've been on the ball. And that pressure has led to them scoring the opening goal of the game. Newcastle won Celtic nil. Well, things just got interesting around here. I probably should have looked at the uh, team long before this game. Normally I have a, a quick peek at the team a few weeks in advance in the Champions League just to kind of see what we're coming up against, especially when you're a few seasons in to see what teams uh, are doing in the transfer market. Oh, Ida, I was in two minds. Do I shoot? Do I pass? And I lost the ball before I even got to make the decision. Kim Min Jade, they've signed from Bayern Munich. Reese James from Chelsea. Robertson from Liverpool. De Bruyne from Man City. Here's Gordon. I thought he was on the bench. I could have sworn that he was on the bench. Oh, whatever. He's in the uh, starting 11 now. Oh, it's Isaac Brooks. Oh, God. Oh, please, no. No. Oh, fuck. Oh, he's offside. He's offside. Thank God. I thought that was a penalty there for a second. Brooks must have won the ball. Then I thought we'd made a mistake which was going to lead to a goal. And despite the fact they put the ball in the back of the net, the linesman's flag went up. Oh, I need to slow this down a bit. I'm giving away the ball far too much. Here's Reese James now. Over to De Bruyne. And now Rafinha. Oh, it's Isaac. Isaac. Oh, that's a beautiful goal. That is a beautiful finish. I can't really say much about that. That was a really good goal. Sometimes you just have to hold up your hands and say that was quality. And that's exactly what that finish was. Absolute quality from the Swedish striker. Well, Celtic know a thing or two about uh, Swedish strikers. If you know, you know. And that one wore number seven. This one wears seven by two. And he's got two goals in this game. Newcastle 2, Celtic nil. Right before half time. And as you can tell there, my voice is on the verge of uh, going. His fifth Champions League goal of the season. Oh, don't tell me they're going to get another opportunity. Guan Brooks gets stuck in. Oh, it's a foul. He's probably going to get booked for that as well. He did go flying in, to be fair. Thought he was going to give away a penalty earlier. And Phil... Oh, what? what? Sorry, what? No way that's a straight red. I don't believe it. Well, I'm glad that my uh, digital self is complaining because my real life self isn't happy either. That was a booking. That was never a straight red. Oh, down to 10 men going into the second half. And that means Brooks will have to miss the last Champions League game of the league phase. That's a harsh red card. It was a foul. It was a booking. It was not a straight red. Oh, probably means I'm going to have to take off a midfielder. Santos is the one who normally gets tired. So he's the one we'll take off. And Costa can come on to replace him. Well, things just got a lot more difficult now. It was already looking bad. And it's just gotten worse. How are Newcastle not higher up the table? Well, they will be now with this result. As I said, they were only three points behind us. That's the thing about the league phase table. Teams can look quite far behind other clubs. But then if you look at the points, as opposed to the position in the table, that's a foul, surely. Yes, it is. Are you going to red card him as well, you dickhead? No, you're not. I think I can see the fucking black and white kit underneath that referee shirt, man. Corrupt. Absolute corrupt bastards, Newcastle. But yeah, if, if you look at the, uh, the points as opposed to where they actually are in the table, it tells a better story. Something I need to start uh, taking more notice of. Meta. Ooh. Good block. And our last Champions League game 
at this stage is not any easier than Newcastle, let me tell you that. It's against one of the uh, European giants who've won this competition a few times, to say the least. Isaac, oh, good save, but I tell you what, if Gordon had been a little bit quicker onto that... Oh, he was offside, never mind. I was going to say he might have uh, put that in for three. But the flag did go up. That's not the first time Brooks has been sent off against the Premier League team in the Champions League. He got sent off against Villa as well. But I was willing to accept that one because he was the last man and it was a professional foul. Here's Adamita though. Oh, good save by Nick Pope. But that one, I just... I, I'm sorry, I can't get on board with that being a red card. Coon's ball in. Oh, Garcia's unable to get there. Is Ida now. See what I mean? In Europe, he just doesn't do as well as he does domestically. And I love Kyogo Furuhashi, but I do want to bring in a higher-rated striker, ideally in the summer. But, I mean, this game is a bit of a reality check as well. We've had some good results in the Champions League. We've had some bad ones as well. But it just goes to show that we can't get carried away because we'll very quickly be brought back down to earth. Is Maida now. Oh my god, that's not... I was trying to give that to Dorado. You stupid game. And Newcastle are now on the attack with Gordon, who nearly wrapped it up there. Right. Ryan Christie, time for you to shine. Let's uh, take Timber off. Sessegnon is knackered as well. We'll bring on Valet. And we will bring on Kyogo as well. Why not? Why not? It looks like the game has already gone from us. The game is gone. The game is gone. So let's try and see if we can salvage at least a goal back. Oh, he's going to be well offside, Kyogo. And he didn't even finish it in the end. <laughs> there was very little power behind that strike. And with 15 minutes to go, it's looking less and less likely that anything is going to come out of this game for Celtic. But look... When I saw the team, I wasn't expecting to get much from this game. I knew that we'd be doing well to get a result. It's going to be another offside there. A lot of these players seem like they were born offside. But as I say, things don't get any easier in the next game, which will kick off the next episode. It will be the first full game that we play in it on Monday. For Hashi, not the greatest strike. Ten minutes to go. Honestly, I'd be happy just to keep it at 2-0 at this stage. Is he onside? Yes, he is. And because I've said that now, we're going to go 3-0 down. Oh, lads. Not been our day here. Not been our day. Newcastle 3, Celtic 0. Isak on form. And we face defeat here in our final away game in the Champions League league phase. Disappointing end to what's been a pretty decent episode, but before we wrap things up here, let's have a look at the league table, both in the Scottish Premiership and in the Champions League league phase. And also, if you are a fan of professional wrestling, then stick around until the end, because I have some exciting announcements in terms of stuff to see on the channel over the next few weeks. So stay tuned to the end if you are a fan of the wrestling business. But we are nine points clear of Hearts there, who are in second place. We have only drawn one game, which was two hearts at home and they've only lost one game which was by us at their stadium but it's nice to see a new challenger despite the fact that we have a pretty healthy lead over them it's good to see that another team is competing in scotland rangers have jumped up to third so their season is starting to look a little bit better than it was a few episodes ago but still they are 13 points behind hearts in second it's crazy to see how much they've dropped off and in the three games that we've played rangers in this season they've not really given us much to worry about so the old firm uh, sorry our old firm rivals are not in a very good spot at the moment but uh listen we don't need to worry about that i just think it's kind of fascinating to see that they've dropped off a considerable uh, considerable amount i can't speak at the moment lads i really need to stop talking for a bit but anyways that is how the scottish premiership is looking 
And if we go over here to the Champions League, we have dropped down to 10th. Newcastle did jump above us to go into 9th. But still, we know that at the very least, we will be finishing in a playoff spot in the Champions League. We don't need to worry about crashing out of the competition altogether. But we also still have a chance at finishing in the top 8. Only one point behind Wolfsburg, who are in that 8th position. And of course, if you finish in the top 8, you do go straight through to the last 16. So it's all to play for there in our final uh, league phase game which I was going to say is a trip to the San Siro but of course AC Milan are not licensed in the game so they will have generic jerseys a generic stadium but they will not have generic players they will have a very good team that we will be coming up against and that will be the first full game that we play on Monday's episode so very much looking forward to it but lads if you are a professional wrestling fan then you might want to hear the next thing that I'm going to talk about on here so, tomorrow, I will be attending OTT's 10th anniversary show in Dublin. OTT Wrestling, or Over the Top Wrestling, are, of course, the premier wrestling promotion here in Ireland. And not only is this their 10-year anniversary show, it is being headlined by two current WWE superstars in Finn Balor and JD McDonough, both, of course, from Ireland. Not only will I be attending the show, but I will be doing a vlog for it that will be being uploaded on this YouTube channel on Tuesday. Day. So very, very much looking forward to that. A little bit of a different content here on the channel. I've been wanting to do some wrestling stuff for the longest time. Didn't want to just do WWE 2K24. I actually wanted to show you, you know, some real life stuff in the wrestling business, uh, especially because I am involved in the industry itself. I am, of course, a professional wrestling referee uh, here in Cork. I referee for a promotion called Rebel County Wrestling or RCW. Speaking of which... The weekend after OTT, I will be refereeing a show in the PAV in Cork. RCW have yet another show that promises to be an absolute cracker. And I thought, you know what? I might vlog some of that as well. And not only that, on that very same vlog, the next day I will be going to a WWE house show in the 3 Arena in Dublin with my two siblings. So I'm also going to include that in the vlog along with the RCW one. So two very exciting vlogs coming up. So if you are a fan... Uh, of professional wrestling then you have those to look forward to and I'm very much looking forward to uploading them so lads if you did enjoy this video then please leave a like and if you also enjoyed it please consider subscribing to the channel and also consider subscribing if you're excited for some of that pro wrestling content coming up really really appreciate the support on this series as always I'm hoping you all have a great weekend I'll talk to you all again on Monday take care